folks. We're back here. Great to have you. 800-282-2882. If you want to be on the program, the email address is rushball at eibnet.us. Have I asked you all about Black Panther yet, the movie? Did I ask you that? I asked you that privately, right? Well, I have not asked this on the air. Folks, can I ask you a question? I need to ask you a question. Are you sick of living in a racist country that has twice elected a black president? And are you sick of living in a racist country where a movie featuring a black actor as a black superhero is poised to set box office records? Are you tired of that racist country? Are you tired of living in that racist country? I know what you're saying, Rush. They're not going to get it. This is way too sophisticated a comment. They're not going to get the nuance here. And once again, you're going to get pilloried for something you didn't say. No, I'm making a point that I've made for I don't know how long. How can this country be as racist and bigoted when its wealthiest and most popular TV personality is an overweight African-American female? How can that be? What? What do you mean, who would that be? How many overweight African-American TV personalities that gave away cars are there? I've, I've often asked that question because I, you know, like, like all Republicans, I sit here and I get fed up with this never-ending allegation. And not just personally, but that the country is this. And of course it isn't. And so this movie, Black Panther, and by the way, I need to tell you, I totally get this. This is a Marvel Comics feature, and I think you know, I think Disney partners in making these movies. Is that right? Is it Disney or is it 20th Century Fox? Is Disney? Because it's Dis- Disney, Disney works with the Marvel movies, and this is, I, I can understand this being a big deal. This is, look at all the Marvel movies and look at all the superheroes, Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, you name it. Wonder Woman, they're all white. They're all white. Now here comes, here comes Black Panther. And and apparently this movie was so popular when it was being made, Mr. Snurdly, that Hollywood royalty wanted to show up and visit the set when it was being made, this thing is being hyped as maybe the biggest, whatever genre Marvel is called, I, I'm a superhero, whatever, fantasy superhero, what, in that genre, maybe the biggest opening weekend. They're looking at $170 million opening weekend. This means it's going to be bigger than Batman or Superman or any of these other franchises. And I think it tells us a lot. I, I think if that happens, and or even if they get close to it, I think it's going it, to it, 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 it obviously will convey or carry with it a huge message about where the United States is culturally right now. And I, I for one, could understand African Americans loving this because here it is. There's an there's a action figure hero. Superhero, superpowers, super, and the first one in American history who's black. Luke Cage is a TV series. Luke Cage hasn't been made into a movie. Luke Cage was good. I watched Luke Cage. And that was Michael, what's his, Coulter is the actor who is fabulous. I loved him in a TV show called Ringer. He got killed off in the fourth episode, but I still liked him. It didn't matter. It was a CW series. It didn't last long, but the premise was fabulous. I liked it. Mike Coulter's great, but that was TV. Luke Cage, black superhero, Marvel, black superhero. But this, and apparently the production is through the roof awesome. The special effects are awesome. Uh, the cast, and, and it's, about a, it's about a fictional African country that has secret great, it's got a secret resource that will save the world from every problem there is. And it's called Vesuvium or some such made-up name. And it's about everybody in the world trying to get hold of this little country and throw everybody out of it so they can take over. And this guy defeats the world, the Black Panther. 
and it's got great stunts and everything. I can imagine this thing is a humongous matter of pride based on some things you have told me over the years. And so $170 million. Now, if it reaches $170 million, whatever it reaches, it isn't going to be on the black audience alone. There aren't enough exclusive black moviegoers to make to generate that kind of money. So this has to be crossing over into many different demographic areas of America. And I think I think millennials are going to push this movie through the roof. And this is it's definitely going to come from the millennial crowd and and given their political attitudes on things, I think it makes perfect sense that this these expectations are there. And I don't think that they would be touting these expectations if they weren't sure it was going to it was going to perform. I mean, they're not. They wouldn't be out there saying it's going to generate 170 million dollars opening weekend if it's not. There, I mean, there's too big a risk. You know, pitch it as perhaps a record opening weekend for the genre, but they've put a number to it: 170 million. Rotten Tomatoes, 100 percent. Positive rating on Rotten Rotten to most of the movie industry think that Rotten Tomatoes is killing them. You know why? Because Rotten Tomatoes is nothing more than your average moviegoer combined with the snark of social media ripping movies to shreds. Whereas the professional critics at the New York Times and Time Magazine have these sophisticated reviews, and most of the people in Rotten Tomatoes are telling these people to pound sand. Screw you. I don't need you to tell me whether I like this or not. Who the hell are you? Why should I listen to you? I'm going to make up my own mind. So they go watch it, hear about it, go to Rotten Tomatoes. and 100. But nobody gets 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. I would if I had a movie there, but but nobody else has. Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming down. But it's, it, it was at 98% statistically no change. But it was at 100%. MovieWeb.com. How many box office records will Black Panther break this weekend? Mid-February release. That's another thing. They don't release movies in the mid the Blockbusters don't get released in mid-February. But they're doing that with this one. Because whenever they release this one, it's going to go through the roof. So this is going to be great for the bottom line. It's a February release where most... Movies die. This thing is going to own everything. Back in January, experts were predicting anywhere between 100 million and 120 million opening weekend. But now they're factoring in that 100% Rotten Tomatoes score. And there was a there was a long oh the Super Bowl spot for for Black Panther apparently was off the charts. People loved that. So that's that's got them guessing at 170 million. And here's the here's the way the breakdown is. It's not uncommon for any movie of Black Panther's stature to outgross its projections. And if it does hit or exceed 136.4 million, it will break the all-time February opening weekend mark of 132 million set two years ago. A Deadpool, which was another Marvel movie. That movie was projected to open in the $50 million range. It opened at 132. Now, there's another Marvel character that I have reviewed. I watched the TV show. It's not a movie. And I reviewed it here on this program, and I found some other reviews on my tech blogs. I found there's a common thread. It was Jessica Jones about the female superhero. And I watched it. I'm not a millennial, so I'm not the target audience for this Marvel stuff. And I, you know, I'm, uh, not all Marvel stuff. I'm not into all of it. Luke Cage, I like Luke Cage. Uh, Jessica Jones, I watched for the socio-anthropological uh, immersion uh, experience, for the social studies aspect of it. Batman, Superman, I'm over that stuff. Star Wars, I'm over this. But this stuff has great indications. And the common thread that is, I think, what's the word, most related to by the millennial audience is the suffering. The 
the suffering and how it is dealt with. I could not believe the reviews of Jessica Jones, how wonderful it was because of all the suffering. And I began to ask myself, these millennials that are watching this, now these are tech and media millennials writing about this, and I don't know how representative they are of the media population at large, but is this how they see life? One gigantic, sufferable moment after another? That life is nothing more than an endurance project to see how you can cope? That that's what life is, is basically coping? And that seemed to be the great message taken from Jessica Jones. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I think this movie is going to have popularity for different reasons. But there's going to be a lot of suffering in this movie because these heroes are going to meet out a lot of pain and a lot of damage to the bad guys. But I always I, I strive to know where the cultural attitudes of large groups of people are as a way of indicating what we need to do in the future. They're going to grow up. I mean, even millennials are going to become adults, adults, older adults. They're going to change. And I, life is, I mean, look, we only get one life. And I understand for most people, uh, it's not a bowl of cherries for anybody. It's got ups and downs, but the whole, the, the whole concept of life being a giant coping exercise and, and nothing but suffering and overcoming suffering. And, and once that becomes the primary identity, then overcoming it and being happy is not permitted. That's cheating. Being happy is cheating. Being content is to be in denial. You have to be suffering. Well, that's not good because there's a political party made to order based on your suffering and your continued suffering. And that's the Democrat Party. The conservatism of Rinaldus Magnus has always been optimistic, uplifting, positive reinforcement, positive thinking, but not phony positive. And I'm hoping that this Black Panther thing moves on from this whole notion of suffering and presents a different message. I have no idea what it's about. I'm not familiar with the character in the comic books, or even if there is a comic book character, is there? Is the Black Panther a brand new four movie only? I have always oh, in the Avengers. Well, okay, sure. Why didn't I? The Avengers. Why? I'm sorry, folks. I did it. Now, one thing. The reason, one of the reasons this movie, uh, The Black Panther, is being released in February's Black History Month. And it was created by Stan Lee and, and Jack Kirby. It first appeared in the Fantastic Four, The Avengers, back in July of 1966. The, uh, I think Disney is being pushed. They're demanding that Disney donate 25% of the proceeds back into the black community. They can't, See this? They're blowing the whole thing. Here you Let the movie speak for itself. The Marvel people invested it, but now here comes a bunch of social justice activists demanding 25% of the take. As though the movie owes the black community 25% of the take. It's, 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 it's crazy. There's a change.org petition calling for Marvel and Disney to put 25% of the take, the proceeds, back into the community, whatever that is. I guess Colin Kaepernick gets to define that. Let me get, uh, get, I'm sorry, not get. That's how they talk in Missouri and Texas is get. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing well today on these pronunciations.